chapter 7, lesson 6 of Advanced Algebra, we want to look at some operations with functions. Now, functions you remember from earlier this year is a relation where each member of the domain has exactly one element in the range associated with it. Each x value gets exactly or produces exactly one y value. And you remember we did those mapping diagrams where we put the domain values in one rectangular shape and then we put the range values in a rectangular shape and we drew arrows from the x value to the y values. And as long as each uh, uh, um, x value had exactly one arrow going to exactly one value in the range, then that was a function. What we want to look at now is adding, subtracting, and multiplying and dividing these entire functions, not just you know a value. We'll also take a look at domain and range, and then we'll look at a uh, slightly different type of operation with functions, and that's called composing or composition of functions. Now, in a case where we might want to add functions together would be uh, if we wanted to determine uh, the distance that an airplane traveled when it had a tailwind, a wind pushing it along with how fast the airplane was going. So you could figure out the airplane distance by multiplying its rate times time, and then you add to that the wind's rate times the same amount of time, and adding those together would give you the distance that the plane could travel when it had this 30 mile an hour tailwind pushing it in addition to its normal speed. Now, what we do with functions, multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting, we do it the same way we would with any uh, algebraic expression, except when we're talking about functions, we're talking about entire functions, not just one term. All right, so let's look at maybe an example or two. So if we had this f function 3x plus 8 and we had this g function 2x minus 12, what would be the f function plus the g function? Well, that simply means you take the entire f function, which is 3x plus 8, and you add it to the entire g function, which is 2x minus 12. So we would take the 3x plus 8, and we would add that to the 2x minus 12. Now, adding is pretty easy. We just add like terms. So we have 3x and 2x, which is 5x. And then the negative 12 plus the 8 would be negative 4. So this would be f plus g of x. Now, if the tricky part, if there is going to be a tricky part, comes when we're subtracting because we have to remember that we're subtracting entire functions. So we're going to take the f function again, 3x plus 8, and we're going to subtract the entire g function. And again, I would suggest you use parentheses here to make sure you realize that this parentheses, uh, excuse me, this negative sign has to be distributed to both terms. So this is going to be 3x then plus 8, and then we're going to have minus 2x, and then a minus this negative is going to be plus 12. And again, parentheses will help ensure that you don't simply take the opposite of the 2x and forget about the 12. So then we have 3x minus 2x, which is x, and then we have x plus, or excuse me, 8 plus 12, which would be 20. So this would be f minus g of x, subtracting the two functions. Okay? So let's see if I get this right. I should be able to. And there you uh, see we have 5x minus 4 and x plus 20. Okay, so subtracting those is pretty easy. To multiply functions is no different than adding or subtracting. We take the entire f function, multiply it times the g function. So the f function again is x squared minus 1, and we multiply that times the g function, x plus 1. So applying the distributive property, we're going to multiply x squared times this uh, second function, and then the 1, and then we're going to add like terms. So uh, x squared times x is going to be x cubed. x squared times 1 is x squared. Negative 1 times x is negative x. And then negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And there are no like terms, so this would be f times g of x. Okay? And then if I wanted to divide, again, I simply take the entire function. Now, this one's going to allow us to do something. So we take the f function, x squared minus 1, over the g function is x plus 1. We're always looking to simplify. 
factoring is something that's going to be a very common practice in simplifying. I recognize this as the difference of two squares, so we can factor this into x plus 1, x minus 1, which then allows me to reduce this entire thing. So f over or f divided by g of x then would simplify to x minus 1. All right, so adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing function, no different than adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing, regular monomial expressions. Just be careful when you're subtracting. You apply that subtraction sign to the entire function. And if you're doing a, a division or anything, really, just remember to simplify your final answer.